Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Rock to You Studio. Today I'm sharing with you a couple of my art journal pages that I missed. The one for Few and the one for Mask. So starting out with this one, I have a very bright background that has some circles on it. And when I was thinking about the word Few, I thought it is one of those words that has a bunch of other words that go with it. And so I had found this graphic that's pretty funny and I wanted to put it on there. And then I also wanted, I, I was thinking about um, the other day, this is kind of a silly story, but I was outside and this happens a lot in, here in uh, Arizona. I was outside watering my tomato plants and every time you're gardening anywhere, like trying to, to pull anything out or or you know trim anything back usually for one thing you usually have to wear pretty heavy gloves because there's spikes everywhere but also you've got to pay attention to where your body is because I bent over to pick up something that had fallen on the ground and as I bent over my bottom hit a cactus and when they tell you oh it's just a few little prickles just a few little spikes no it's not you touch a cactus and you get like a hundred little things. There's there's the bigger ones, the longer ones, and those are pretty easy to get out. But then there's all these little teeny, teeny, tiny ones that are just like the sizes of hairs. And so it's not a few, it's a lot. <laughs> and so I was thinking about that and um, how I still have this like scratchy spot on my, my bottom where it's they're still in there you know, and that they tell you lots of things. Oh, take your hair and rub it across there and that'll pull it out. Or put some tape and that'll pull it out. No, you've got to sit there and pick them out with like a tweezer. And it's just really annoying. So I decided to make a cactus scene and I like making these scenes anyway. I like to showcase where I live. And so the colors of the background and the, the round shape, uh, the round shape kind of reminded me of the sun. And this, this stencil has always reminded me of the sun, like this kind of circles that have kind of a scribble around them. It just it reminds me of, of modern sun images that I see a lot where I live. It's, you know, iconic shape to be around here. So what I did was I did like some exclusion painting. I, I wanted to highlight one of the circles, so I left that and then... I painted everything else out, but I drew some kind of um, craggy mountain shapes, which is what I live near. And then I painted each one kind of a different color. And it's shimmery paint. It's the uh, PBO Dyna iridescent paints that I used. And so it has some shimmer to it. When, so when you see the, the uh, close-ups, you'll see that it's shimmery. Uh, I guess I didn't mention at the beginning, this is day 10 of hashtag Art Journal Habit 2019, a challenge, prompt challenge event brought to you by Art Joy of Sharing Art Community on Facebook. And we have these different types of challenges throughout the year. Sometimes they're ATC, sometimes they're, well, we have monthly stuff, and then we also have um, like things where it's a challenge to do something every day. And this is one of those everyday challenges. There's a prompt for every single day. And I've been trying to make a video every day. I did miss a couple. So this one is one of the ones I missed and I'm catching up. So once I had my background done, then I wanted to put some cactus. And I went over and I got my green color box because I thought I was just going to collage on some little cactuses. But then I found this one that's like a, it's like an iron-on patch that was on something and I pulled it off because I thought it was cool. It was made out of glitter, glittery fabric or something with iron on, on on the background. So I decided to glue that one on as my focal image and then just put some other ones in the background. So I found a glitter pin that's green that um, is like a bullet tip felt pin. And then it just has like a clear a clear acrylic something in there and then it's got glitter in it and I thought that that would be appropriate since I had this glitter applique thing over on the other side. I think I got that at a wedding actually. 
um, they gave away little goodie bags at the wedding and they were in canvas bags and that was glued on it or ironed on it or whatever. So I also added my funny graphic about how the word few has like kind of a, a meaning is, it's not real clear what the meaning is. And then there's all these other words that are similar that have the same, <laughs> the same kind of ambiguous meaning. So I thought it was funny. Then I, uh, I did want to make sure that my cactus had prickles on it. And so I drew those on with a white Posca pin. Um, the type of cactus that I backed into is not a saguaro. It's a totem cactus. It's a really cool cactus. And it's been growing now for all these years. And it started, it's reached the roof and is trying to get past the roof. And it just happens to be right there where I was bending over. And now I have an itchy spot that I can't get rid of. So, um, yeah, drawing on some cactuses in the distance. We don't just have a few cactuses in Tucson. We have two Saguaro National Monuments and an Organ Pipe National Monument where there are thousands, maybe maybe even millions of cactus. So it's not just a few here. <laughs> you might see a few prickly pears in California, but here we have lots of cactus. So I drew some prickly pears. I drew some uh, others in the distance. And then I'm adding in a little bit of shadow with this graphite pencil that I've been playing with lately. A little bit of highlight with the white Posca pen. And that's pretty much it for this page. It's, um, it was a quick and easy page. That's what I needed to, to do to make two, two pages in one video. I need to make them fairly quick pages, but I think it's cute. And I like how the sun with this, the kind of things around it turned out. So pretty happy with it. I, um, I like it. So here's your close-ups. Okay, for day 11, the prompt is mask. So I pulled out my page and I know that I'm gonna do some collage on this one. I'm gonna do cut collage, paper piecing. So I was thinking about African masks and really a lot of cultures that have masks or, or um, things that cover your face, things that represent a face a lot of cultures have them and, and they all look different, but I was looking on Pinterest and I always like to look at art stuff on Pinterest and I saw some children's activities that were, you know, to do with a classroom or whatever, where they were making masks out of cardboard and, and basically piecing them together, just like I'm doing is on this collage making different pieces and, and as they were making them with cardboard the some of the pieces stand out and it becomes three-dimensional and it I mean I, I don't think that's really even just for kids I think that would be a fun activity to do for anyone so I was looking at the different ones that they had on Pinterest and that's kind of where my shapes came from the <clears throat> the third one I do I think looks a little bit more Mayan than it does African but I'm not trying to be accurate. The ones that are made in Africa as an art form are made out of wood, I believe. And that's a lot more involved than cutting out some pieces of paper. And I don't think they're always as colorful as these. I'm using gel print paper. So it's going to be colorful. It's going to have a lot of pattern. And I think mostly what you see in the classical African one would be the wood grain coming through. And then they do use paints or stains of some sort. But there's a lot of black and white and wood color and maybe some red. Not so many crazy colors as these. But this is fun. I enjoy doing this. This is something that I would just do for fun. So I wanted to make them just out of paper. So the papers that I'm using are text weight paper from my printer that was printed during the last month long gel printing challenge. 
So they're just different ones. I just pulled them out for color. Basically, I didn't, I'm not thinking about what pattern's on there, but I think one piece actually has some text on it because it's a piece of dictionary, but then all the rest of them are just, uh, just white paper that's been gel printed. This time for the gel printing challenge all month, I used the six by six and the three by five plates instead of the larger plates. So also the background is a gel print as well. I was make, showing how to make lines and grids on your prints when I made this. So I, I think it's probably, it's just some tool dragged through the paint and then picked up. Has a very definite grid on the background, but it's purple, I like it. Uh, it has a little bit of copper around the edges and uh, like those places that might look brown in the, the video around the edges are actually copper. Purple and copper look really nice together. I should do that combination sometime. And then the darker edge on the left hand side is spillover from the back, which is the, uh, it was the prompt was liquid and it's the moon page. And I got a little bit of that dark paint, the indio, indigo colored paint on the side, on this side. So yeah, that sometimes happens. <laughs> and it's not something you can really prevent, particularly. You just got to try to be careful. So I'm cutting the different pieces out, gluing them on with my Liquitex matte gel medium. Some of the pieces are really tiny and maybe I should have done more pin work instead of the pieces, but I just, I was having fun, so it wasn't a big deal. So I encourage you to go and look on Pinterest and find some African mask projects or other mask projects that you can do with cardboard. I actually have a board on Pinterest that is about cosplay and making costumes and people are making amazing costumes and masks and things using foam these days and and then also cardboard even cardboard I've seen like horns like really nice cool horns made out of layers of cardboard so there's lots of that stuff out there that you can look up and it's it's fun to do I just haven't really gotten into it the last um, Halloween costume that I did was face paint <laughs> You know, it's, it's hard to wear a mask. I don't like wearing them because I feel like my eyesight, my peripheral vision and stuff is, is cut off and that bothers me. So I generally do face painting for any costume that I might wear. But if I was going to do cosplay or even do something like steampunk or something like that, I would definitely wear bigger, bigger things that I would make myself. And I've considered doing it. I just haven't had time. It's time consuming. You have to be into it and focused on it to do it because it's going to take you a long time to make that costume. And then you've got to go to events and things and just, I, I'm interested in it, but I'm not so interested that I've gotten off my behind and done it. <laughs> so this one has a lot of feathers or feather type shapes on it, which I liked. This one, the middle one seems more masculine to me and the one on the left seems more feminine. Uh, there were just two different designs that I saw made out of cardboard and they hadn't colored them, it was just cardboard. And I'm sure they were getting to co coloring them and if I had clicked on the pin, I probably would have went to a website where it showed the whole process and maybe they would even be, um, uh, res not recipes, um, patterns. Wow, <laughs> that was a hard one to get out. There might be patterns on some of those websites that you could even download and uh, then you wouldn't have to do it yourself. To make interesting masks, you can hang them up as decorations too. They're just, they're just cool and they're an interesting art form and I always wonder why the features on masks are so exaggerated or distorted. I don't know why, but I always wonder. And there's definitely a style, like if you look at stuff from the Aztecs or the Mayans, there's a definite style of that art. And if you look at the African ones, there's definite styles, probably regional, I would imagine, because Africa is a big place. 
So I bet there's even regional styles. I just, I don't know that much about it, but. This last one I did with a circle face and I cut that circle out of a print actually. I don't know if you saw me doing it. I think most of the cutting is probably off the screen, but um, it was a circle, lots of circles on a piece of paper and I cut it out around the actual pattern off the piece of paper. And then I'm putting some feathers or leaf type shapes on this one too. This one I kind of made up myself. The other two look like something I saw on Pinterest pretty, pretty much. You can make them up yourself. You absolutely can. There's no reason to even follow a pattern if you don't want to. As long as you think about the exaggerated features. I thought about deeper stuff that I could do with the prompt mask and how we all hide behind masks and, you know, <laughs> things like that. And then I thought to myself, you know what? I'm just going to make some masks. It's fun. It's a lot more fun than thinking about all this depressing stuff. I need to get away from depressing stuff. So <laughs> that's how these came about. Bright colored, sort of African-ish style masks. I intended to have them centered perfectly. And as you can see, they are not. So I ended up putting a uh, word on the left hand side, the word mask on the left hand side to kind of make it balanced because everything got kind of shifted to the right instead of centered the way it should have been. I should have, if I wanted it centered, I should have started with the center one in the center and then built the one on the left and the one on the right and then it would have been centered. Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> this is just an art journal page. It's not like it's going to hang in a museum. So goes in my book. Maybe I'll look at it next year when this November comes around next year. I'll flip through it again, but probably won't be seen until then. So yeah. I decided that they needed something to ground them. I, I know they're masks and they're probably hanging on a wall or something, but it was bothering me. So I just put some little scrappy pieces of paper underneath to ground them to the base of the page, sort of. Literally scraps. This little scrap pile on the right, I'm using a lot of it to do these tiny little things. Pieces that have already been cut even, like that was the center, the red pieces were the center of the mouth of the one in the middle. And I just cut it in half and made it into some little marks under the eyes. And I think the piece that I use to ground this one is something that I cut out uh, a feather-ish shape from, or leaf, or whatever it is. And I just cut that in half and put it down below. So, just gives them something to ground them. Then my next step was to do a little pin work. I did some shading around all the shapes with a dark purple Fabric Castell. India ink marker and I blended it <clears throat> with my water tank brush just to um, make them look as if they're part of the page and not just stuck on there. I like to do that. I like to make shadows around the edges. And so I did all three of them shadows around the edges. And I also did a little bit of other shading around some of the shapes with the fabric castells before I switched to Posca pins, which are acrylic paint markers, um, a little bit different than these. These are a brush marker and I'm blending and then with the Posca pins, I just use them as a straight lines. That green should have been darker, would have looked better. So I've got Posca pins. These are the fine tip, not the extra fine, but the fine. And I'm just making some marks and lines and different things all around um, on the masks to kind of highlight different things, different features. And some of it doesn't show up very well and I end up changing it. But. 
at first I wasn't going to use any black at all and so I wasn't using black and then I ended up coming in at the end and using black because I put the word on and stuff and then it needed black inside the masks but that had not it had been my intention to use zero black definitely going to use white though this is my fine tip white Posca pen <laughs> can't imagine doing a page without that it'd be the end of the world I think I put some ink around the edges. Yes, some black ink. That was where the whole black thing started. The, those dark those dark blue things on the edge were bugging me, so I thought, well, if I put black all the way around the edge, it'll kind of blend in and look like a frame. And then the, the letters I picked out ended up being cut out of black paper as well. So I glued those down, got them all sealed on there. And then I, that's when I thought, oh, I'm going to need to use black marker. <clears throat> so I hope you guys are enjoying watching these videos every day, pretty much, for hashtag Art Journal Habit 2019. And I hope a lot of you are playing along. I have seen beautiful photos of people's pages over in the Art Joy of Sharing um, Art Community Facebook group. So I'll put a link to that group down below and you can come and join and that's not too late to join in. You don't have to do a page every single day, but it's always fun to do some art journaling and share it. Also, please remember to give this a thumbs up. Leave me a comment or question below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Turn on your notification bells. That's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye.